Thank you once again for attending the um, demo day. Our startups have spent significant amount of time preparing for this presentation. Most of, most of them will present to the investors for the first time. So let's start. As we grow older, oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm Jnani Palani Kumar. I'm one of the co-team members who runs a cohort program along with Sudhir and Subhash. So the first to start up Plethi, as we grow older and live longer, we are going to have joint problems. After the surgery is done and the patient goes home, what happens then? Plethi provides a solution for better patient care at home. Please welcome Plethi. Hey, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. At Plethi, our focus really is on enabling patients to manage their joint care at home. This is a huge pain point for the health system. Why? Because one out of two of us here in the United States has a joint issue. We're all grown old. The way the health systems are managing this onslaught of patients is by accelerating outpatient procedures. What does that mean? They're sending the patient home the same day of surgery. So the critical need in the marketplace is how do you manage patients at home? That's what our solution does. Now, a problem this big is also a huge opportunity for us and for you as investors. It's a $25 billion serviceable, obtainable market just in the United States. And aging is a worldwide phenomenon. Now, to solve a problem this difficult, you need the right team. We are that team. We're a team of leaders with technology, business, medicine, and medical device who've come together, been on both sides of the table to address this issue. So how do we solve this problem? Through a platform called Recoup. Recoup's in the market today. It has three components. The first is a where anywhere sensor that's proprietary to us. Looks like this, goes on any joint in the human body like this. It's a magnetic band-aid tracks every joint. The second portion of our solution is the app that takes the patient step by step every day through their care plan twice a day. And the third is a care cloud that provides the right insights at the right time for the clinicians. So how is it used? Our patients use it to prepare for surgery at home, including doing physical therapy, to recovering at home after surgery. Our clinical teams use it to assess patients' readiness for surgery and then to quicker intervention as needed after surgery. Values extracted one of two ways. A physician group gets $2,000 in reimbursement by using our service, or a hospital system in a fixed cost procedure model saves $3,000 by either service reduction or service elimination. Now, one of the things that I'm really thrilled about is our patient adherence to the care plan, just machine learning driven. Our patients spent four and a half to eight hours just preparing for surgery. Makes us quite differentiated. How differentiated? As I look at the market space, I see a few apps and point solutions that only focus on the knee. We all know joint problems occur in every joint in the human body. We're the only comprehensive solution in the market that addresses every joint in the human body. The way we go to market to health systems, our customers, is direct sales and leveraging channels and distribution that have been existing for the last 10 years that the orthopedic OEM manufacturers have already built out. We charge $600 to the health system per patient, per procedure. And one of the things I'm thrilled about is the traction that we are seeing in the marketplace. Marquee health systems that are either in pilot with us or working towards pilot. We have our first contract in hand that we are fulfilling. We're looking to close the next four to six by the end of this year. Our revenue projections call for $70 million ARR over the next five years. We're looking to raise $3 million to address the opportunity that we have in the market right here, right now. As I said, joint care management at home is a huge problem and a huge opportunity. We are the right team with the right solution in the market 
seeing the right traction that we deserve. Join Saras. We are the lovely people with the orange balloon. Looking forward to having a conversation. Thank you. So the next startup, Drone Inch, has an innovative business model for accelerating the drone technology in agriculture. Are they the Uber for farm surveillance? Let's find out. Please welcome Drone Inch. Thank you, Nirani. Hello, everyone. We automate drone flights. The name of my company is Drone Inch, and I'm Srivatsan Desikan. I'm the founder and CEO of Drone Inch. Drones are being applied to a vast number of opportunities for service, inspections, and deliveries. In industries such as agriculture, mining, and construction, the sole purpose of application of drones is to replace people from complex, dangerous, time, and resource-intensive jobs. Our first area of focus is agriculture. We play in five major areas, from digital scouting all the way to advanced analytics. To do any of these use cases, you need a minimum of 13,000 pictures and 66 gigs of data per flight per average US farm. It's collecting this data that is a problem. Today, you have to program every flight parameter manually. You have to check for flight restrictions. You have to use expensive drones. And still, you don't know if, you've, if your data is accurate. Our solution is automating this collection of data using inexpensive off-the-shelf drones to make the process effortless, economical, and error-free. We, we automate the drone of flights using a smartphone to collect this data, which is then used, we can use through our third-party integrated partners to analyze and give you results. Uh, in a farming situation, a farm manager uses the cell phone to the app to prepare a mission. They can need not be in, in the location. The farm supervisor brings their own drone, plugs the phone in, and then the software takes over. It flies the mission, and then all the results are available online for a third party expert to analyze. Again, geographically, somewhere else. There is a perfect storm going on between customer adoption, technology, and regulation. Previously, it required you to have a lot of skills to fly a drone. Now, all of that can be automated with AI. Previously, you know, uh, it, a lot of drones ended up crashing because they didn't have the ability to avoid collision. Now, we, we now automate collision avoidance, takeoffs, landings, weather, et cetera. Previously, compliance was an unknown. Today, the regulation is caught up to the industry, and we automate a lot of these regulations to make it easy for the customer. Drones is a big market. It's a $132 billion market. Agriculture alone is $32 billion. Sorry, it's a 127. 32 billion is agriculture alone, and it's recurring every single year. How do we stack against competition? Kespri, our main competitor, has a complex proprietary and expensive solution that requires annual service contracts up to $200,000. We are disrupting the space. We are providing a low startup cost, economical pay-by-mission model unlike anybody else in this industry. Combine it with our wide variety of partners, it gives you a wide variety of analysis. Our go-to-market strategy is three-pronged. We go direct sales for vertical applications like plant growth, cattle counting, et cetera. We use ag IoT for partnerships on a subscription model. We service providers white label our product as well. To do any of this, you need the combined experience of aerospace, geospatial, SaaS, and agriculture experience. We have a team that has all of that, worked together for 20 years, and we um, you know, have had successful exits. Our app is already on the App Store. You can download it. There's a QR code there, and our website is live as of last week. Our ask today is $1.3 million, which gives us a runway of 20 months, delivers $2.7 million, 500,000 missions, 2,000 customers. Thank you. And I'm right there. He's there. I'm right opposite there. Thank you. The founders of Curious AI met at McKinsey. They have deep technical expertise in AI and enterprise data system. 
their vision is to uh, change the AI paradigm in enterprise application and create a personalizable automated data scientist. Please welcome Curious AI. Thanks, Nani. At Curious AI, our mission is to use AI to address the productivity skills gap that we see in large enterprises. So to start at the beginning, based on our experience, despite all the technology investments, enterprises still struggle to improve performance by using data. While technology is largely focused on analytics and doing data analysis, we believe asking the right questions or knowing what to look for is really 90% of the puzzle. Right? To give you a sense of the scale of the size of the problem, by 2026, we will spend about 15 times more money on data teams and data analysts as compared to all the analytics, BI, and AI platforms put together. At Curious, we've developed a technology that can be trained to mimic a human domain expert in business operations. Today, we are taking this technology and applying it to find trends and automate root cause analysis in sales operations. Eventually, we will expand beyond sales operations to other business operations functions like product insights, revenue operations, et cetera. Based on our initial feedback, out of the box, we see a 25 to 35% time and efficiency saving for business analysts. Over time, as the platform learns and improves, we believe we can automate the entire data flow uh, or data analysis workflow. Today, the product layers itself as a form of contextual intelligence that can augment a business analyst. For example, when you look at reports like this, which are showing you recurring revenue for two different customer segments, there's a lot of data being thrown at you. Curious is able to automatically identify the fact that something unusual happened in a three-quarter period. Because we can see revenues are dropping, Curious will also suggest that you look at either customer churn or uh, changes in buying profiles as possible root causes for this particular trend. Now, one of the things that makes us unique is the fact that if I log in as a different user into this platform, I may see a completely different set of insights. We think the power of this technology is in being able to personalize the right kinds of insights to the right person in the right context. Every business is unique. Every business analyst is looking for a different angle to the same problem. In terms of product vision, while we're very bullish in terms of the technology and stuff, we've tried to reimagine the entire data experience from a business analyst lens. Right? Imagine logging into a single pane that contains all your key metrics, as well as it gives you the insights into various aspects of business operations, as well as gives you a platform for communicating and collaborating with peers. Commercially, this is a fairly large market, and we are starting off by focusing on a very small segment in the high-tech and SaaS space. We come in at about a $40,000 price point. This is about 3% of the annual savings we are able to realize. We also have a $50 per user per month variable component that we charge, and this lets us scale to match the size of the enterprise that we're going to work with. Right? In terms of initial traction, we are very bullish. We were hoping to do three POCs this year. We've already lined up four, and we'll most probably double this number by the end of the year. In terms of the landscape, we think this is an opportunity to introduce a new first-of-its-kind product. There are no competitors we know of today that are actually able to provide the same kind of capabilities. We believe Salesforce Einstein will catch up to this eventually. However, we see this as a land grab opportunity. The personalization metadata we collect, it builds in tremendous lock-in. To our pleasant surprise, platforms like Looker see this as complementary technology and a natural upsell for their reps. So as a result, we are designing a GTM based on partnerships with some of these data platforms. As a team, Jigger and I met in McKinsey, but between the two of us for the last 20 years, we built and scaled businesses both at a startup level as well as in large organizations. So let me take a step back and just recoup what we are talking about. So at Curious, we're trying to solve an age-old problem by applying state-of-the-art technology. We think we have a unique combination of timing and technology that makes the market very attractive. We're very bullish based on initial feedback. And please come by our booth and take a look at the demo if you'd like to. Thank you. So the next startup, uh, Infinity Takes, is all about the team. Sri Ramaswamy is the first uh, woman CEO of IIT Startups Growth Program. Five out of six core team members came from an insurance domain. The sixth member, CTO and IITN, is the spouse of Sri. Please welcome Sri Ramaswamy. Was that real or fake? <laughs> Few years ago, my husband got into a fender bender accident at Trader Joe's parking lot. What was supposed to cost the insurance company $850 ended up costing them $50,000. 
Why? Because there was an attorney that was brought in and there were some medical injuries. Three things were missed by the insurance companies. The insights and patterns within unstructured data, similar pattern, similar accident patterns, and organized activity. At Infolytics, we provide an artificial intelligence-based recommendation engine that does claims optimization to solve such problems. Claims is a very manual process. 70% is manual today. No wonder the claims insurance team is missing a lot of insights and a lot of patterns hidden within the data. This costs the industry over $150 billion, and these costs are passed on to you and I as premiums. Our solution automates the unstructured and structured data analysis. Our built-in algorithms have been designed by experts that very quickly learn patterns and insights through which the claims team can decide which claims to pay and which claims not to pay. I did say experts. Five out of six out of our core team members come from the insurance industry. John Standish, my co-founder, ran the fraud division at the California Department of Insurance. I myself come from the insurance industry and have launched two products in the insurance industry. This is a huge market, $100 billion. We are focused on the US property and casualty industry. In the insurance industry, the market segmentation happens based on premium revenue. When we launched our product commercially, we started in the tier three, tier four space. Today, we are building channel partnerships to get into the tier one and tier two spaces. We are an enterprise B2B SaaS company. Our revenue model is quite simple. We offer, we, we charge a one-time fee for historic claims and a recurring fee for a monthly recurring fee for ongoing claims. The monthly recurring fee is based on tiered pr pricing, and this is what contributes to more than 80% of our revenue. Our patent pending algorithms very, uh, is very domain rich, developed by experts, is very, uh, very quickly able to get the insights and patterns through which one of our customers have saved more than $10 million in their hurricane claims. Through this analytics journey, we are also collecting a gold mine of unstructured claim insights. Yes, we will tap into that in our product roadmap. Our current bookings as of today is at $2.1 million. Our projected ARR for the next 12 months is at 1.1 million. We have four paying customers as of today. In order to maximize our revenue, recognizable revenue, we are raising money of $2 million. Please join me in disrupting the insurance industry. This is for you and for your next generation. The claims process has to be improved now. My name is Sri Ram Swami, founder and CEO of Infilytics. We are right there, the first booth out of the stage. Please come and have a look at the demo. Thank you very much. Thank you. As they say, garbage in, garbage out. Success of visual AI hinges on the accuracy of image annotation to train AI algorithms. The current process is ripe for disruption. Our next startup, Training Data IO, creates high accuracy image annotations, uh, smarter and simpler. Please welcome Training Data. Thanks, Nani. Good afternoon. I'm Gaurav Gupta, founder and CEO of trainingdata.io. We use active learning to reduce error rate in data labeling. Today, AI models suffer from lack of high quality label training data. Because labeling process has error rates as high as 65%. And hence, we are disrupting the workflow. In the current workflow, Data science team has a project lead who sends out data to places like Asia, Africa, and Eastern Europe. 
And this workflow has four major problems. Number one, specifications given by data scientists are lost in translation. Number two, results come back in batches, and hence quality checks are infrequent. Number three, data science team cannot use their existing AI models to predict labels in advance. And number four, data is not secure. We have built a new workflow in which data science team has complete control over how annotation software appears to the human labelers. As a result, specifications are not lost in translation and quality checks are very frequent. We have built an active learning system in which data science team can use their existing AI model to predict labels. Now these predictions are inaccurate. Human labelers fix the inaccurate predictions. When our system, our workflow, was deployed in radiology AI companies, for the first time, they were able to create pixel-accurate annotations. They observed five times increase in speed of labeling, and the error rate went down. Market size for internal data labeling solutions is huge and it's growing fast. Almost all internal data labeling solutions are fairly new. We plan to lead this pack by providing pixel accurate labeling tools, quality control workflow with active learning, and out of the box support for medical imaging. Managed services space has seen some acquisition in recent past, and that is a proof that data science teams want more control over labeling process. Our go-to-market strategy is to start in radiology AI and then expand to underserved domains in computer vision. Our business model is very simple. We offer three versions of our product. One is free version for developers. Second is SaaS version for small businesses. And our main focus is on enterprise version with SLA. Our product has seen some early adoption with a bunch of paying users and freemium users. In addition to that, we have received excellent reviews from NVIDIA's AI team. Our founding team has more than 20 years of experience deploying visual AI systems. And on business side, we are, we are fortunate to have advisors who have done exits before. At this point, we are raising 500K in safe notes. These funds will be used to acquire 100 SaaS customers and at least one enterprise customer by Q1 2020. Again, we are training data.io. I'm Gaurav Gupta, and I will be in that corner. Happy to chat with you. Thank you. Enterprise sales development is extremely challenging, even with CRM tools. Slintel's AI recommendation engine combines enterprise proprietary data and public data to increase the conversion rate for sales development reps. Please welcome Slintel. Thank you, Granny. I am no Superman, but we're building a product that can convert every sales guy into one. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Deepak Kanchala, founder and CEO of Slintel. We are building a revolutionary product to transform the way sales development is done today. The problem today in sales development is most companies do not know who their next customer is. You ask this question to any B2B company, and they draw a blank. As a result, sales development reps spend about half of a day, four hours every day, trying to figure out whom to reach out to, they launch spray and pray campaigns and get less than 1% success rate. This leads to heartburn and missed quotas. The solution that we have implemented, uh, this is a live example of a customer, ZipRecruiter. Uh, so we were able to tell ZipRecruiter who exactly they need to target on any given day. 
the way we were able to do that is we were able to tell them who uses their competitors, when their contracts come up for renewal, who uses their partners, who is adopting or churning a product every month, and what does their past data say. Using all of these insights, we were able to increase their response rates by 3x. As you can see, our day, we have built algorithms that are able to identify different technologies companies use, how that changes over time when contracts come up for renewal. At a vendor level, we are able to identify who the customers of the vendors are, how that is changing over time, and what does it mean for the spend in that category. ZipRecruiter was not just a one-stop wonder. We have done the same for 20 customers, annual customers that we acquired in the last four months. Yes, guys, we eat our own dog food. We have seen tremendous growth, and we are helping other companies use the same growth uh, with our technology. The product that we're building is a unique combination of sales discovery, outreach, and a recommendation layer on top, with features like SDR quota management, SDR collaboration, and SDR reporting on top of it. No, ex no such product exists today. We're building a full suite SDR automation platform. This is a $25 billion market ripe for disruption. For far too long, players have operated in silos, and the pain has increased manifold. Uh, like companies like Discover.org or um, InsideView, they do not have the data about the, what, what happens to the insights after they leave the platform. Companies like Outreach, Mixmax do not have the metadata. So a unique combination of these two is required to get the right insights. We have the right team. Uh, we have over 100 years of relevant experience. There are 16 of us today. Eight of us are developers. So we have uh, machine learning engineers. We have front-end, back-end engineers, data engineers. And the rest, eight of us, are sales and marketing guys. So we, have, we are a team that has been there, done that. Given our strong team, traction, and product market fit, we were just able to close a seed round uh, just a week ago. So the money just hit the bank one week ago. Um, we will be looking to raise our Series A the moment we hit our 100 annual customer mark. We expect to do that by December of this year. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, we are building a category-defining product that can disrupt sales disruption, say sales development. So if you, if you want to know more about it, uh, feel free to contact me. I'm at the third booth from the corner. I look forward to speaking with all of you. Thank you. Transportation keeps supply chains moving, and all of us happy. Now, to keep that transportation moving, we lose sight of all the drivers and the truckers who keep all those goods moving day and night. Our next company, Ivey Hall, actually will make a difference to those truckers and the enterprises that engage them. Please welcome Syed Aman from Ivey Hall. Thank you, Subhas. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Syed Aman, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Ivey Hall where we're connecting enterprises to truckers seamlessly. We are a team that has spent most of a career at Walmart, where we built various supply chain and logistics products and brought them to scale. One of our co-founders, Zahed, is a serial entrepreneur. He had his own trucking company at his own distribution center in Los Angeles. And on our advisory board, we have STS Prasad, who was the VP of supply chain at Walmart Labs. We started just eight months ago. And in a blitzscaling fashion, we are able to raise $1 million in investment, have filed five patents, have $1.6 million in revenue in gross transaction value, and we are currently at a $3 million annual revenue run rate through six paying enterprise customers, including our flagship customer, Samsung. Samsung tested our technology just few of their truckloads back in November. Since then, they have doubled, tripled, and quadrupled their business with us. They did so because of the demonstrated operational efficiencies they observed as Highway Hall delivered their freight to marquee destinations such as Walmart, Costco, Best Buy, Amazon, and Target. But this is not easy if done the traditional way because the trucking, company, the trucking industry is going through a very old school ways of doing things. Can you imagine it takes seven to 10 fold calls just to book a load? No wonder 65% of the brokerage cost is just manual labor. To top it off, there's an industry-wide shortage of drivers that's only getting worse with every passing year. And that's where we come in. 
Highway Hall has near-perfect on-time delivery score. We have reduced phone calls in half. We have cut down those empty miles by 84%. So much so that 90% of our customers are willing to refer us to others. All this has been enabled by our core technology platform, Shipper Portal, Driver App, and the God Mode through which we run our day-to-day -day operations. What's unique about this is it has been purpose-built from ground up, keeping the peak scalability in mind. So, let's, so where does it leave us? We have now activated almost half of the country, moved tens of millions of dollars of freight, weighing tens of millions of pounds, and driving a million miles across America. And our customers are our biggest fans, as you can see. Now let's look at the big picture. It's a $1.5 trillion global TAM with an on-demand TAM of $350 billion in US alone. And our projections call for a $1 billion of revenue for highway haul at scale. So it's a big market out there. It will take several players to coexist. You all must have heard of Uber. They do everything. People, cabs, food, freight, flowers. I don't know what they're going to do next. Our true competitor is Convoy, founded by ex-Amazon team, and we are ex-Walmart. What search is to Google, supply chain is to Walmart. Our business model is fairly simple. We take a commission on each transaction between the shipper and the carrier. So the shipper pays us, and we take a 10 to 15% margin on that, pass on the rest to the carrier. Three-year revenue projections, $5 million, $50 million, and $200 million. And we are raising a Series A of $5 million to build regional sales teams, launch our carrier and driver loyalty program, establish 24 by 7 customer service, and scale up the dev team. We are Highway Hall, and I'm Sayyid Aman. Thank you so much for your time. That was a growth stage company in our cohort. I forgot to mention that. Our next company is all about information and security. Okay, Manishi wants me to introduce myself. So I'm the Chinese guy, my name is uh, Subhash Chowdhury. Most of you have seen emails from me saying Chow at IID Startups, that's me. <laughs> okay. So my next company is all about information and security. We think it is secure. Sorry. Okay, sorry, got excited about this. So the, uh, in this information and security, we all think that all of the information that we share is going across these boundaries very secure. It is not secure as far as everybody knows, right? So this company, i2Chain, is making sure that it stays secure as it crosses boundaries. So please welcome Ajay from i2Chain. Thank you, Chow. Good evening. My name is Ajay Jotwani, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of i2Chain. i2Chain has a singular mission to be able to secure the two most valuable assets of an enterprise, information and identity. Imagine your, your loan being processed by a mortgage banker that transacts with over a dozen entities to underwrite that loan. Bank of America has 33,000 mortgage bankers and the only way Bank of America is able to secure your personal information with these 33,000 mortgage bankers is by loosely defined confidentiality agreements. The GDPR commissioner has very clearly mandated enterprises must be responsible for personal data or pay 4% of the top line, 4% of the revenue as penalty. Marriott last week was fined $125 million. Equifax lost almost half, one third, one, two third of their market cap and settled at settled fines of $700 million very, recent, very recently. The problem is enterprises are unable to securely share and transact information and identity. I2Chain is, uh, is, a, is an intuitive, easy to use, succinct SaaS application that enables enterprises to securely share and transact identity information with integrity and with confidence. And we do it by leveraging three technology towers. Our first tower is advanced cryptography that allows enterprises to secure the identity information by a single click. 
Our second technology tower is adaptive rights management that enables granular permissions and ensures that these permissions persist even if the user were to store the information in their domain of choice, their storage of choice, or their USB. And the third is the state-of-the-art blockchain-based distributed ledger technology that enables immutable traceability. Therefore, even if that Bank of America mortgage banker were fired or goes rogue, your personal information still remains secure. How beautiful is that? The proof of the pudding, we have secured a very strategic deal at a CEO minus one level with a Forbes 100 digital company to drive four and a half million dollars of ARR. And we are planning a pilot internally with this, uh, with, with this strategic, strategic partner. And it gives, also gives us corridor access into some of their largest customers in banking, financial services, and healthcare industries that, which are clearly aligned with our, in the, with, our, with our industry focus. In addition, we are kickstarting two pilots this month, one with a West Coast mortgage banker, and the second with a healthcare provider, a large healthcare, healthcare provider. Having said that, we are not alone, but we differentiate ourselves on two specific vectors. Vector number one, the rest of the world says, you want information and identity protected? Come to my home, my domain, my cloud, I will secure it. In contrast, I2Chain promises securing your information in your domain, in your cloud, in your premises. So we are non-intrusive, storage agnostic, and partner of the, of, the, of, the, of the providers. The second is we talked about immutable traceability, and, and I'm gonna use some jargon here. We are perhaps the only company that enables enterprise to harvest evidence quality forensics. It's a huge difference, differentiator. And the best part of I2Chain is its team. We have over 100 years of experience in, 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 in cybersecurity. Prior to I2Chain, I was a global vice president of strategy and product management at IBM. I was fortunate to incubate uh, digital workplace services, a business segment, and I led it to deliver a billion dollars of signings in under, under a year. Partnering with me are specialists in engineering, architecture, domain specialists, and advisors who are helping us both on the technology and business to take us, take us, take, take us forward. At this point of time, we are providing a unique opportunity to the investors to come and partner, partner with us as we seek $1.8 million to attain a million dollars of ARR in the next nine months. In doing so, uh, more than half of the round is filled. Uh, time is of the essence. Uh, we are running, and we look forward to our partnership. I'm right there with the biggest screen in the house. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Joe. Thank you. Speaking to digital assistants could be as bad as pulling teeth without going to a dentist. I don't know if you've ever tried it. Our next company is going to make that interaction with digital assistants. Sorry. The next, uh, our next company is going to make that interaction with digital assistants less painful and retain you as a customer without you leaving mad. Please welcome Ketan from Agents. AI-powered, pre-trained digital receptionist for small to medium enterprise. Hi, my name is Mukesh Goel. I'm a co-founder at Agents AI. Our vision is a reliable, pre-trained AI receptionist for SMB businesses to automate the range of routine tasks. Okay, uh, the problem, like one third of the calls that are made to SMBs today are dropped because of inadequate staff to hire, train, and retain a, uh, a receptionist by an SMB is, is a significant challenge. And there are 10 million SMBs in the US alone. And the cons consumer expectations have changed as we are all the users of Uber and Amazon, right? Our expectation is that we expect high level of responsiveness. We expect the same level of responsiveness from our small, medium businesses as well. We are doing chat and texting more than uh, actually doing a phone calls right now. So what we have is a digital receptionist. It automates routine tasks 
It's available 24 seven and best of all, it's pre-trained for a specific category and it's ready to deploy in a few minutes, which is a simplicity that small, medium business need. They do not need a complex setup or anything, something that gets off the ground running, okay? And if you look at the typical SMB routine, it's, it's similar for pretty much most small, medium businesses. You attend, to, uh, attend and guide the visitors, you convert the leads, and then there's an appointment management involved, the person shows up at the office, so there's an office, in-office communication that is involved in that and then the post appointment follow follow through with the with the uh, with the customer so we intend to automate all of this process in order so that smbs can improve their operational excellence as well as improve the customer experience our customer attractions we have more than 2 dozen customers in dental space right now we have signed up four channel partners and our customers are getting 10x roi uh, from their investment this is an actual customer data of the visitors on the website, 17% of the visitors are engaging with our solution. 36% um, of those, 37% of those engagement happens off hours, so people are reaching out for information off, off hours. And then 23% of those actually end up making, um, in, uh, like further interaction with the company and, and end up making appointments. So for this particular company, they're getting a 10K worth of benefit out of a $99 product from us. We are a team of SMB SaaS experts. We have a team of serial entrepreneurs and have experience in SMB and, uh, and uh, enterprises. Uh, we have healthcare and SMB expertise. Our advisors are SMB leaders and some of them have helped uh, uh, grow SMB practices in large companies. Okay. Our market focus of the large SMB segment, our market focus currently is consumerized healthcare and of which our beachhead segment, as I mentioned a few times, is dental. Dental happens to be the biggest in the consumerized healthcare space, and that's where we're going first. Uh, even though it's a small uh, segment within SMB, it is still significant enough with more than half a million healthcare establishments with less than 20 employees, and, and the marketing budget's running in billions. AI assistant space today is where website building was in 90s. Everybody needs it, and they will get to it, and we want to get be the one to deliver that experience. Our business model is SaaS with free trials, and we're building customer uh, acquisition, we are doing customer acquisition through channel relationship. Our pricing is $99 uh, to 149, and we are, our growth objective is to sign up 10 major partners uh, that will bring 50 new customers every month, and that will get us to 10 million ARR. And then we move up, up market with franchise owners and business. In terms of competition, there are customers, there are competition in enterprise space. Uh, pretty much most competition is focused in enterprise doing lead generation, customer services. There are some startups that are coming up in this space. We typically don't, in our customer interaction, we do not encounter startup as much. And our value proposition to our customers is, is that, hey, we, we offer the simplicity of experience. Okay. Our ask right now at this point is $1 million to to grow uh, to, for the product enhancement as well as uh, channel development to grow to a customers, 10,000 plus customers over the next four quarters. Thank you, my name is Mukesh Goel and my booth is next to the coffees. So looking forward to interacting with you guys. Thank you. All right, is this time we moved already. So money laundering happens. It happens big time. So our next company is a growth stage company. Please welcome Shirish. He, Amberoon has demonstrated impact in reducing the risk for banks while making sure that they have meeting all the compliance regulations. Welcome, Rich Shirish. Thank you, Chow. My name is Shirish Netke, and we are solving the $2 trillion money laundering problem for banks. Most of you know that money laundering is a huge problem that affects people pretty much all over the world. What you may not realize is that only 1% of laundered money is actually caught by the authorities. What's also probably not known is that banks spend about $70 billion in trying to catch that $25 billion and they're obviously not doing a good job of it because the regulators have decided to fine them $200 billion over the last 10 years for letting bad actors slip through the cracks. 
This is a huge problem. And from our point of view, a huge opportunity. Now, we looked at the root cause of this problem. The root cause of the problem is kind of, we are kind of the guilty parties here at enterprise software. Enterprise software in banks was deployed with the idea of being a system of record, not a system of insight. That has led to a whole bunch of problems like a lot of false positives, bad analytics, and probably most fundamental design flaw in this, in this approach is that these enterprise software solutions have been designed as a one size fits all, which is in direct contradiction with the regulatory guidelines which, have, uh, which regulators have issued over the years. Now, we looked at this problem from the point of view of a solution as a, an agile compliance problem. The words agile and compliance have not been used together very often. We have decided to do that. And we looked at it along two angles. One is uh, flexibility of process, and the other is insights. And traditional banks are obviously in the bottom left-hand corner with poor insights and poor flexibility, and that's where, they, where the traditional software and enterprise software vendors are. And their only response, or their only ability to solve that problem is adding more and more people. They've gone up like 10x in the last uh, few years or so. They've added a lot of people. Meanwhile, a lot of technology prep companies, a lot of them from the Bay Area, have used the traditional model of licensed software plus implementation to create pretty good solutions for banks. The only problem is they cost millions of dollars and are suitable for folks like the 50 large banks, not the 10,000 small banks and credit unions in existence. If you were to look at it from the point of view of what we do, we are in the top right-hand corner where we have forensic inquiry and AI and, uh, underpinned by AI, which provides a solution which is more specific to the bank's flexibility needs. This gives you more flexibility, more speed, and actually a lot more insight into what's happening in the bank. The net result of this is a reduction in cost of about 50%. Now, We've socialized this idea with a lot of regulators who are kind of the end user deciders on this product. And they have called us in to train bank examiners to look at how the, what the future of technology is going to be in implementation. And uh, we've also considered thought leaders in the area because we wrote a chapter of an upcoming book called uh, the RegTech book. You can look for it in the next, uh, uh, it's upcoming, it'll be, uh, it'll be up in the next week, uh, week or so. Um, we are scaling our business by going through partners. We have one partner, we have a, a, a product being released in September with DXC. Most of you know it at EHP and EDS. And we have traction in the form of current customers who are giving us SaaS contracts. Uh, we have a, a, a pipeline which get us to a million dollars in ARR in the next year or so, and partnerships which will get us to a three million level in year two. The management team at Ambaroon has uh, consists of engineers, entrepreneurs, and bankers who have created hundreds of millions of dollars of value for early stage investors in the past. I would say the, the most important aspect of this opportunity from an investor point of view is its timing. We are coming in at a time when banks are struggling. The technology is ready. And most importantly, there is a tailwind from regulators to implement this, which is kind of the, that's where the timing aspect comes in. We have a million dollars from strategic investors who are taking us to banks. We are looking for investors who can add strategic value to our business. Thank you. Billions of dollars are being spent on cancer therapies. Unfortunately, these therapies don't seem to be working for a lot of patients. Our next company, Datomic, is taking a new approach to addressing this problem by improving the chances of success for cancer therapy patients. Please welcome Rajat from Patham. Thank you, everyone. 
I am Rajat Troy, CEO and co-founder of Pathomic. I'm sure most of you have someone in the family or know somebody amongst your friends who have been affected by this deadly cancer disease. I also lost my mother and few other family members recently due to this deadly disease. The large farmers are building new drugs to cure the cancer. But unfortunately, those drugs are not getting to the patients because 90% of the clinical trials are failing. So we have developed a platform that identifies predictive signatures on cancer tissues for therapy response and informed patient selection for clinical trial success. The farmers today are spending billions of dollars and over a long period of time with a 10% success rate. So they have, they're trying their best to ensure that drugs are successful and get to the market. And the reason primarily being is that the patient selection method today is inadequate. Lack of predictive signatures for, patients, for identifying patients who will not respond to the approved therapy or standard of care is the issue. Many medical researchers and our bioscientists in the team have been researching for several years and they have finally concluded that the answer is in the tumor microenvironment and not in the cancer cells with its molecular data only. High dimensional multimodal data analysis using deep learning methods are required to identify these predictive signatures for therapy response. A pathologist with their naked eye can never find these hidden insights from the cancer tissue. Pathomic was co-founded by such world-class bioscientists and data scientists to solve this problem. I'm a serial entrepreneur having co-founded successfully three startups. I'm passionate, very passionate to solve the problem for obvious reasons and being guided by exceptional advisory team from the large farmers as well as from the medical institutes. Pathomic is enabling a paradigm shift in clinical trial design, drug approval, and treatment planning. It's a game changer for the pharma industry. We have been able to identify a unique cancer signature on the cancer tissue for therapy response with 85% accuracy, which the medical community and the pharma industry claims that they have never seen this kind of accuracy before. It will not only help the farmers to reduce billions of dollars and time, it will also enable them to generate top line revenue as well as get the drugs to the patients much faster and in a way that it works. There are several platforms today that are based on only genomic analysis and with a 30% or roughly so accuracy rate. And there are a few startups have started digital pathology platform, which is primarily for research activities. We have already identified signatures in two large cancers, prostate and breast, and now working on non-small cell lung cancer very actively. The market is huge. It's a $58 billion TAM with a $24 billion SAM and addressing the large pharma needs. Our business model is direct sales to the large pharma. And over time, it will be a channel sales through CROs to medium-sized farmers. Three components of revenue generation, platform access fee for the signature discovery, clinical trial license subscription fee over three years of $25 million, and $40 million per drug per year for company in diagnostic. We have already developed the prostate cancer and the breast cancer, which is one of the two of the four big cancer types signatures. And now working on lung cancer, which is the third biggest one. We are engaged with two farmers right now 
and we are planning to close the contract in the next two to three months. We are asking for $4 million for 18 months run rate to scale the operations and engage with two other farmers. Thank you very much. We've all seen exciting demos and visions of augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, and, and all those holograms and the latest things that are going on in this space. Our next company, Imaginate, is actually making that a global business reality. Please welcome Hemant from Imaginate. Good evening, everyone. My name is Hemant. I'm the founder and CEO of Imaginate. We enable enterprise collaboration using immersive technology with VR and AR. If you look at the typical engineering workflow, so there are problems everywhere. So right from the design review stage, where reviews happen on 3D models using 2D platforms, which leads to huge turnaround times. And second, shop floor training of how people have to work in shop floors happen in classrooms, which is unintuitive. Third, for field support, people have to travel across the world to fix field issues. We solve this problem using immersive multi-user VR Air enterprise collaboration platform, where if you look at the picture up there, on the left is Adam with an augmented reality glass, where he's looking at the actual engine which has malfunctioned. And on the right, you see a picture of two of his colleagues who are, looking, who are in different parts of the world, but inside one virtual space using a VR using different VR headsets they have, they have put on. They're looking at the live video of what Adam is seeing inside the VR space, alongside with a CAD model of the same exact engine. They're able to troubleshoot what has gone wrong, and they're able to exactly pinpoint on how Adam has to follow different sequence of steps to fix the machine there. So why now? The smart glass market is expanding at two times compared to last year. And we have better network coverage to enable immersive meetings and low cost of adoption. And finally, the greater push to Industry 4.0 with enhanced workplace productivity. The, the target market is quite huge. We're focused on the industrial sector with a market size of $5 billion. Now, coming to the competition, there are a few VR companies which, folk, which are on VR meetings, and a few of them offer AR support. We are the only company out there which caters to the entire engineering pipeline, right from design review till field support, and we are VR, AR, medium agnostic. We have a lot of customers. Some of our marquee customers include Shell, Suzuki, and Coca-Cola. And this slide is a testament to the problem that we are solving in the industrial sector. Our go-to-market strategy is quite simple. We are a SaaS platform. We charge by the host license. So we offer bundled solutions with different smart glasses out there. And we also have channel partnerships with companies like ABB, Deloitte, and Cisco. So this is our team. So, so I have about 15 years of experience in the AR VR space. And we have collective experience of about 100 years in the enterprise and startup space. We're rated by Forrester as one of the top 20 startups all across the world in the AR VR space, agnostic of use case this year in 2019. We raised $500,000 in seed money from a venture capital firm called Sri Capital, which is again run by another IIT Delhi alum, Sashi Reddy. So our last year's revenue in SaaS was $200,000, not much during our product development stage, but we're expected to hit a $5.5 million revenue in the next two years. We're looking to raise $3 million, $3 million in pre-Series A money, where majority of the money is going towards sales and marketing. This is me. I'm Heymanth, and I'm joined by my colleague Mano Jacob here. So we have a stall there. We have a lot of uh, good glasses there. We can try out our solution. Thank you. And if you want to see a video, there's a video here at the link here. Thank you, everyone. All right, so we've come to the end of the presentations. And uh, let's give a round of applause to all these great entrepreneurs.
wishing them success and uh, hope the dreams come true. Oh, okay. So please fill out the surveys. You should have got a survey link in the uh, QR codes in the beginning. I, on the, there must be a link to this. Okay. Now, I know we've been doing this all voluntary, right? As you heard from Munishi and from Sudhir, this is a volunteer effort. No egos, nothing. Doesn't matter if you're a millionaire who had a lot of exits. At the end of the day, we're doing it because we want to do something good, give something back to our alumni and to the institutions that gave us education. That's the whole point behind this. So it's all from the heart, okay? So there's no, no money in this. There's no other motivation behind this. So given that, if you know other IITNs or other IIT startups who haven't heard of us, heard of us please have them contact Monishi at monishiiitstartups.org for the next cohort, okay? So that's the email to send to, and then he can send you the applications and figure out how to get you onto the next cohort. Now, all these startups have demo tables on the side. You're please welcome to visit them and get more information on what they're doing. Now, none of this is possible without you, obviously. So a big hand to all of you guys for coming here. And on a weekday, during office hours, so we appreciate that. Thank you once again. Thank you.